the last head coach firing in the NFL is the man known as Anthony Lynn, the Los Angeles Chargers head coach for four years. Uh, he was just fired as well with Adam Gase and Doug Marone. Uh, he's, what's interesting about this is that he signed a one-year extension in the offseason. Um, but after that, Chargers went 7-9 this season. They lost seven games by one score. Um, but they ended the season on a high note, winning the last four games. Um, this was reported by Adam Schefter, uh, written by Shelly Smith, ESPN. Um, all right, I'll I'll start this one off again. I'll say this: this one's a little this one's a little more different than Doug Marone and um Adam Gase. This one was this one was expected, but not as expected as the other two. Um, but I'll say this: I mean, he didn't do that bad at the end of the season. I mean, like I said, he won his last four games. He ended on a high note, so that's good. Um. But I mean, I mean, I can understand why they fired him. I mean, this, you know, when you look at the Chargers, and, and the many times that we've read their stats and whatever, they have one of the best offenses in the league. They have a future. They have a future franchise quarterback in Justin Herbert. You know, they got other guys such as Keenan Allen to lead the way on uh, on offense as well, and they got a pretty good defense. I mean, the defense wasn't that great looking in the beginning, but as the as the season went on, it started to improve a lot, and it really showed. Um, but the problem was is that his, his play calling just costed them games. That was the problem. And, and like I said, out of those nine out of those nine losses, they lost seven of those by one score. That's think that's just that's unnecessary. And that's that just goes to show you how bad play calling was. And because of it, um the Los Angeles Chargers did the right thing by fi- uh, by firing Anthony. Well, I'm not gonna say he's a bad head coach. Um but what he was doing the last couple of years just wasn't gonna cut it for the Chargers, and because of that, they fired him. Um, well, before I get my point, I just want to say good luck to Anthony Lynn, like we said with the other two coaches. Right. Good luck to him and his future endeavors, and good luck to the uh, Los Angeles Chargers. This one's so tough for me to, like, even say anything. It, it's so tough. And the reason why is because, like, a point, uh, it's like yes and no are, like, it's like if I'm a rope, and, like, yes and no is playing tug of war on me because I yeah, want, right. I'll go with the yes side first. Exactly what you said. You know, he had, like, two or three straight losing seasons. I absolutely agree. Um Exactly what you said. He's had uh, seven games decided by one score, and it just didn't work out his way. Absolutely. That's the yes side right there. The no side is this. He's made it to the playoffs before. Right. A. B, you have a very young quarterback who just went seven and nine. Okay? He went. He wins a couple, two of those seven games or three, then he's in the playoffs. Right. So that's why it's very tough for me. Now, here's the thing it's very unlikely for a rookie quarterback to make it to the playoffs in their first year. Right. If you want to talk about rookie quarterbacks who've done it, um, uh, Ben Roethlisberger mm-hmm. did it. I think um, I'm trying to think of others. I'm really trying to think. Maybe Russell Wilson did it. Uh, I believe. I'm not too sure on that one either. Um, I'll look at it. But but the fact that I can't think of any others besides like sure others like Ben Roethlisberger that just shows you how hard it is for a rookie quarterback to make it. And a lot of people are going to say Tom Brady. No, don't get that twisted. Tom Brady, uh, got drafted. Actually, Tom Brady might have made it. Tom Brady, I think, made it his rookie year. Yeah, Tom Brady made it his rookie year too. But here's the thing: that's how hard that's how hard it is. You know what I'm saying? The fact that I have to think of rookie quarterbacks that made it their first year, besides the ones in the 80s and 70s, that's how hard it is. So that the way off. I look at it is this. That I understand why you fired him. I'm sorry? Dak Prescott was another Dak rookie Prescott. quarterback. Dak Prescott. That's the one I forget. That's the reason why Dak Prescott. Thank you. But the fact that – but that, that's – I understand why they fired him. And the reason why they fired him is because, you know, they were having two straight seasons or three straight seasons with losing records. I believe it was two. Because I believe they made it to the playoffs one year with us. Yeah, they made it. They made it, and they beat the Ravens. Two straight losing seasons. I absolutely, agree. I absolutely understand it. Okay. Also, got to remember though, you went seven and nine, which isn't really a bad record for a rookie QB. He's only going to get better from here. Anthony Lynn had, I think, the perfect offense for Justin Herbert. Justin Herbert is a gunslinger. We're going to use a gunslinging offense. Did it cost him sometimes? Yeah, but you know what? That's what gunslingers do. They throw the ball. They throw it nice and deep. And sometimes it pays off tremendously, and sometimes it, it fails them tremendously. I mean, look at Brett Favre. Right. Brett Favre is the perfect example of that. Even Peyton Manning. 
Peyton Manning, I think, holds the record for most interceptions by a rookie. <laughs> yeah, right. So, I mean, like Brett Favre and Peyton Manning, they were gunslingers, I feel. They could throw the ball deep. Sometimes it would cost them. Sometimes it won't. But let me tell you something. They were damn good quarterbacks. Right. And with that being said, um, I say this. I say you could have you could have wrote out the one. I'll say no. I say I'll disagree with this. And the reason and there's one factor here is that the fact that you signed into a one-year extension in the offseason and um, you signed to a one-year extension, not an extension. I say you can sign up for like a one-more-year extension. Get one more year. This is a rookie quarterback. See what happens in this one more year. Right. And if it doesn't work, you can go. But I understand the win now mentality because now you got a young quarterback and you want as many years to win as possible. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to waste those next those first two years of a quarterback's career off yeah, of right. I understand that. And so now if, if I'm saying this, if you, I respect the decision that the Chargers made, but if you're gonna hire somebody, I um shot uh uh Marty Schottenheimer. I believe that's Marty Schottenheimer is a very good uh, coordinator. Marty Schottenheimer, yeah. He used to yeah, coach the Chargers, I think. I think. Very good. I think he used to coach the Chargers, did he? Um, Philip Rivers was there or something like that. I think he did. He probably did. Marty Schottenheimer, yeah, because I think that was the last NFL team. Yeah, last team he coached the CFL. He the Chargers from 02 to 06. I'd say you can bring him back and you can do a lot of good things with him. Um. Oh, I'm sorry. I got the wrong Schottenheimer. I got the wrong Schottenheimer, I believe. I got um. You can hire Brian. Brian's a very good coach. Um, that's his son. In case you haven't, his son. Uh, that's Marty Schottenheimer's son, Brian. And I think you and he's the offensive coordinator right, for, right now for the Seattle Seahawks. And look, and I mean, beside despite this year, I know it's been a slow year for the Seahawks. But look at the other previous years that the Seahawks had. That was a right. really good offense. Right. And that's consistency right there too. He's been able to be that good to create that good of an offense consistently so with that being said i mean Mar- I, I got the uh schottenheimer's messed up that's on me but i believe brian schottenheimer your first priority 